Since its independence in 1947, India has seen some path-breaking budgets that have changed the course for its economy in the following years. The first on the list, of course, is the first budget after India became a republic. Presented by John Mathai in February 1950, it laid down the roadmap for creation of the Planning Commission. Though the body had already been announced by the President Rajendra Prasad and created later through an executive order, the budget gave the composition of the commission. It was to be chaired by Prime Minister Jawaharlal Nehru, Labour Minister Gulzari Lal Nanda was to be the deputy chairman. There were to be four members and the names of three were announced. The budget talked about drawing a new plan in place of the earlier one, formulated after the Second World War, in the wake of the partition of India and integration of the former princely states into the country. And this job was given to the Planning Commission. Though his budget paved the way for setting up of the Planning Commission, Mathai himself resigned after a few weeks in protest against vesting of huge powers with this proposed body. The next on the list is the 1957-58 budget presented by T. T. Krishnamachari in May 1957. It put curbs on imports through an import licensing system, took back budgetary allocation for non-core projects and set up an Export Risk Insurance Corporation to protect exporters against payment risks. The budget raised the income tax rates, introduced the wealth tax, a tax on expenditure and a tax on railway passenger fee. The 1973-74 budget presented by Y.B. Chavan is now termed the Black Budget because it showed a high budget deficit of 550 crore rupees. It allocated 56 crore for nationalization of general insurance companies, Indian Copper Corp and coal mines. The aim was to allow uninterrupted supply of coal to meet the growing demand by power, cement and steel industries. In the budget for 1986-87, much before states introduced state VAT and GST came into being, Finance Minister VP Singh introduced ModVAT or Modified Value Added Tax. This allowed a set of duties paid off on inputs against the duties payable on final goods. A year later, after Singh was moved to the Defence Ministry, the 1987-88 budget presented by Prime Minister Rajiv Gandhi, who held additional charge of the Finance Ministry, introduced Minimum Alternate Tax or the MAT. The 1991-92 budget is known for path-breaking policies by then Finance Minister Manmohan Singh. It ushered India into the road of economic liberalisation and reforms by shunning the past policies of Inspector Raj and import substitution. Though much of the reforms happened outside the budget, this landmark budget did prune the peak customs duty from 220% to 120%. Finance Minister P. Jadambaram's 1997-98 budget is called the Dream Budget. It lowered the personal income tax rates to 10%, 20% and 30% from 15, 30 and 40%. It launched the Voluntary Disclosure of Income Scheme, an amnesty scheme to bring out black money. The ad hoc treasury bills used for financing the budget deficit were phased out. The budget also allowed companies to adjust MAT paid in earlier years against tax liability in subsequent years. And more recently, the 2017-18 budget saw Finance Minister Arun Jaitley setting the stage for GST. Though he did not mention the exact date of GST rollout, he did not make any changes in the excise duty and the services tax because, as he said in his budget speech, the same are to be replaced by GST soon. If you like this video, share it and subscribe to Business Standard. For more news, views and insights, log on to www.business-standard.com. Do also follow us on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Telegram and LinkedIn.